What's going on, everybody? Anthony Pettis has announced that after 12 years, he's leaving the UFC. That's right. He's decided to go ahead and try out free agency. Uh, a lot of people speculated that might be happening uh, with no re renegotiations before this last fight against Anth or Alex Morono. It's, it's come to pass. He's not staying with the organization that we've really watched him uh, grow up in, so to speak. He obviously, we, we saw him on the big stage at WEC, but really he's come into his own and, and really grown uh, in, in the UFC. And now he's headed for other other pastures. Drake, what do you make of this news? Uh, I love it. <laughs> I think it's great just because I love to see, you know, notable names who aren't aren't completely done yet. Like, you know, Romero, for example, recently and all pretty much all the people who have moved on and for the most part in these last five years or so have had some steam left in the tank. And I think Pettis has shown us that, especially in um, these last two performances, because it's the first winning streak he's been on since uh, he was the champion, which is kind of insane to say in hindsight and everything with how much, um, you know, hype and uh, just how good he was looking at his, at his in his prime, of course, which I don't think he's in it anymore, but he's still proving that he definitely can't hang with most people maybe not the top guys anymore which i think that is fair to say but uh that doesn't mean he can't still have plenty of fun fights with who knows who you know outside of the ufc so it's exciting for me and not very surprising for um reasons which i'm sure we will get into but uh what was your reaction to it pat i i'm not surprised because we knew this that he we knew that he was going to be a free agent after this um recent fight so not 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 too crazy for me yeah, no, I, I wasn't shocked by this move at all. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. As you mentioned, um, you know, this is the first winning streak he's been on since he lost the belt. He's six and eight since he lost the belt. Uh, losing to very, you know, good names. It's not like he's lost to a bunch of, you know, lower ranked fighters where it's like, oh, okay, maybe it's time to hang him up. He, he just isn't in his prime anymore. I think that's the best way to describe it. You know, he's, he's only 33 years old. He still is young. He can still improve on things, but... I, I am very much of the mindset that when you go in there enough times, you know, that takes a toll on your body, regardless of the age. And I, and I feel like at this point, he's he's past his physical prime. He's past his prime as an MMA fighter. We knew going into this fight, obviously, his brother Sergio Pettis is over at Bellator. We knew there was a lot of rumors and he hasn't announced where he's going yet, but I would bet money on Bellator given that Sergio's over there and he's kind of hinted at it. So with with this type of move, with the opening up of his uh, fighter management agency as well, which is something that he did that kind of flew under the radar a little bit, I think he's really poised to go to a place like Bellator, still make good money, but then also you know branch out into other things and, and kind of cap off his career at a place that will pay him more for what he believes he's worth. Because I would pretty much guarantee that despite we know Anthony Pettis as the Wheaties box guy, as, as the former lightweight champion, I wouldn't be shocked if the UFC said, hey, we can't really give you that much more money for a contract extension. We can kind of offer you this much, especially with the way that they're kind of shifting their brand at the moment. So I, I wasn't shocked either, frankly, when it comes down to it. Uh, I, I, hit, I hit on it a little bit there, but you mentioned, um, you know, you weren't shocked by, by this notion. Let's dive into it. Before we do, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, give us your feedback. What was your reaction to Anthony Pettis leaving the UFC, making a big formal announcement of it, doing a little letter and everything, showing pictures? What was your reaction to Anthony Pettis is, is UFC no more? That being said, Drake, uh, why were you not shocked? Let's dig a little bit deeper there. What do you know that maybe the, the layman doesn't know? <laughs> I mean, not much. You pretty much took it from me. It's, it's the Bellator <laughs> connection, right? <laughs> and Sergio, that's that's pretty much the thing. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was just knowing how, you know, of course, Anthony knows what's been going on with Sergio and Bellator and how he's been treated. He knows all that stuff. So, I mean, he's probably, the, the thing about it is he was probably going into, he probably planned for this entirely because, you know, this was something, he made this decision and announced it very quickly that he's like, all right. Because I'm, I doubt that they got right to negotiations immediately after. You know what? It's only been a couple of days, so he's like, "All right, I'm gonna let you, everybody know. I'm looking to, you know, see what comes at me. Maybe the UFC will offer him something. I would be surprised. Everything considered, and what he will likely want that they will offer him something that will be worth it to him at this stage, right? And just 
how he can see. He has a little bit of a preview of what is possible for him in Bellator because of his brother, what his brother is getting. And just to think, he probably will get something better than Sergio. And I'm sure Sergio is being treated very well, right? I mean, because he's got the name and everything and just what we've seen so far with him. Um, and I mean, it's funny, we saw, uh, I don't know if you saw, Patricky Pitbull is already like, mm-hmm. see you soon. <laughs> he's, like, he's, already, he's already like, all right, I know it, man, it's coming. <laughs> like, it'll be a no-brainer. I th- It would be surprising now if he does not go to Bellator. I think that he's put this all out there and just what we already know. It would be surprising for him not to end up in Bellator. Um, other things are possible, of course. I mean, people mentioned one already, which would be fun. Be very fun. Um, I, it would be incredibly fun, I think, for his style to see him in like Ryzen, like some somewhere like that. But again, with everybody else who we've talked about, recent free agents recently, same rules apply for him. It is not going to happen, in my opinion. For <laughs> very, I feel very strongly about that because just go look at any of the other Yoel Romero, Anderson Silva topics that we've talked about, and I will, that will tell you why right there. Because you know, international fighters. Let's just put that's that's the big reason for it. Um, and the coronavirus and everything. So, uh, unlikely for that. Very, very unlikely. And I just think that the Bellator option is super strong. But uh, so many options now for fresh fights. That's just what I love about all the all people moving around and everything. But, um, yeah, n- not surprising to me, essentially, because of the connection that was already in place. Yeah. And, and again, if I have to bet on a promotion for Pettis to head towards now, I'm, I'm going to bet Bellator. Easy. Um you know, Bellator 2, you mentioned Ryzen. Bellator and Ryzen have done that crossover exactly. stuff. Exactly. Could, could still see Pettis there. There is one championship. That would be interesting, but I don't see one having the financial means to do that right now, especially with uh, some of the statements that uh, Chachi Sitchidong made uh, about, you know, trying to get into turning a profit by November of next year to add a big guy like Pettis is always good, but I mean, he comes with a price tag and I'm sure Bellator is going to at least match what the UFC was paying him. I'm not sure one can afford to do that right now. Um, You know, PFL is another name that hasn't really been mentioned too much, but I would kind of love to see if I'm Pettis, honestly, for a million dollars, just do like one season with the PFL. That ain't that ain't bad yeah. either. Um, You know, especially if I'm confident I can go out there and win and I'm better than those guys. It, it makes a lot of sense. So I, I kind of like PFL as a as a dark horse option, although I'm still giving it like less than 5%. I'm, I'm pretty sure Ray Bellator. Ray Cooper would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, cool would be, it would be great to see, you know, or, or, he, or he could, you know, he's been fighting at welterweight, you know, he could, you know, end up fighting Rory. That'd be a great fight for oh PFL. My, yeah. yeah, like that, that would be an amazing fight. So, um, you know, again, Based on financials, based on how late it would be to add him to the 2021 season, uh, I, I don't see it happening. It, dark horse, I'll give it 5%. I think pretty much he's probably headed to Bellator. Um, let us know who you think or is going to pick up Anthony Pettis. If it's Bellator 1 PFL, let us know your reasons why. That being said, you mentioned matchups. We got to wrap up this video with fantasy one just came Anthony right Pettis. to mind <laughs> oh i <laughs> like it i, I like it <laughs> i like it all right so who do you want to see anthony pettis fight next or what are some fantasy matchups for you now that he's a free agent i don't know if this is the one that i want to see like the most but it came immediately to mind just as we were sitting here thinking about stuff and i mean how are they not how was bellator not gonna do the Benson trilogy. I know that he's not the same anymore and probably a little bit more down the hill than, you know, most unfortunately, but uh, that just sets itself up, right? I mean, come on. The Benson Henderson trilogy fight, easy, easy main event that they could do um, despite the recent lack of success that Benson has had. I think that that would be just interesting from a history standpoint. Um, but other matchups, of course, I think that yeah, pit, either Pitbull brother would definitely be a fun one at at uh at lightweight, of course. Um, and then of course there's welterweight options. Oh, here's the one. This is what I think they should a hundred percent do for. I don't know about debut. It it it's it depends on how you know from a business side what you want to do for the debut. I think the Benson one is probably perfect for debut, but they should do MVP 
so that we quit messing around with this MVP nonsense and get him back to fighting people who like he was in the tournament with the Paul Daly's and Liam instead of dropping him all the way back down like they have done since then. You got to do that MVP fight because it, it, it works for both of them. I think that's the move. Yeah, that actually you you took my debut fight right there because that was the one I was yep. thinking. I think that's I think that's flashy stylistically for as long as that lasts. I think that's perfect. I think you're gonna see flashy MVP moves, spinning spinning shit all unless day, he right? decides to take him down. And I mean, <laughs> he could, he could, but I I don't yeah. foresee that happening. I think yeah. that would be a great call. Uh, Pettis has said, you know, after at least. And it's hard to say how much of it was just kind of bluster when he was talking about going back down to 155 after beating yeah. Alex Morono. It's possible that that was maybe a negotiation tactic by him for, mm -hmm. with the UFC to say, hey, I don't want to be at welterweight anymore. You've got to let me go back down. If you're not going to and paying me more, then I'm, I'm out. Who knows? Um, but, uh, you know, if he does go back down to lightweight, I, of course, I love either of the Pitbull brothers. I think that's a phenomenal match. Um, you know, but it, it, other than that, and the Benson trilogy, I mean, you've took most of my, yeah. my, <laughs> my picks here. I will say, if he won enough fights, I would be very interested to see Anthony Pettis versus Douglas Lima. I think that could be a really good fight, especially if Pettis is in like prime Pettis form. If we if we see him, you know, rack off a nice win streak, look better than he has, you know, kind of going back and forth. Uh, in the UFC, I, then I would like to see Douglas Lima versus Anthony Pettis because I think the potential is there for a really good fight. Um, other than that, I've already mentioned Rory McDonald if he went to PFL. If he went to one, of course, you could set up the Alvarez rematch. Um, but, you know, th there are some options there as well. But, yeah. I, I mean, assuming he's going to Bellator, I think we've pretty much hit most, if not every possible option for what he's going to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that you mentioned that about Lima, though, because that's the reason I didn't say it is because as of right now, I think Lima probably beats the brakes off of him. Like at this exact moment, if they made that, I haven't seen enough from Pettis against, you know, top competition to to give give me the belief that he would be able to hang in there with Lima at this stage. Maybe if he rattles off a couple more wins against maybe some other options we didn't mention, like Lorenz Larkin. That's a that's an interesting matchup right there. Two that's, good strikers. Yeah. Um, I mean Raymond Daniels from a, just a fun style matchup. <laughs> that's a guy right there. Um, even though I'm not sure if he is at, at welterweight or middleweight at the moment, but um, you know, just that's in terms of strikers. That's a fun one. Uh, and then, you know, I wanted to mention this too, because in hindsight, actually, especially after this weekend, Pettis' recent wins, they look a lot better. <laughs> they look a lot better than they did at the time. I mean, of course, it's been, this is over a four-year span, right? But Charles Oliveira, Michael Chiesa, and Stephen Thompson, in hindsight, they've actually looked a lot better. But he is still, you know, had his struggles against other top guys. But I just wanted to point that out. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Lima thing, though, because... As of right now, let's let's not do that. Please don't do that, Bellator. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, and and even those wins, you know, if I'm being honest, at least from my perspective, it, o Oliveira's big, but it was at 145, yeah. which you know that that's saying a little bit. Um, the Thompson win we've talked about before. Thompson was beating the brakes off him. Great adjustment by Pettis. He deserves that victory. But I, if they were to rematch, I'm not sure how well that would go for him. Um, and and then you've got, you know, Michael Chiesa, who again, at 155, where now we've seen Michael Chiesa really come into his own as a 170 guy. So it's, you know, I, not that those are, are taking away from Pettis' win, so to speak, but I don't count those as, man, those were some... All rematches would be very different, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. Rematches, I, I'd be a little... I'd be hesitant to, to put money down right away on Pettis on any of those rematches. Um, so with that being said, again, drop the comments. Let us know who you want Anthony Pettis to fight now that he's a free agent. Uh, I don't think he's going back to the UFC... You said it's possible. Technically, it is possible. But the way he wrote that letter and everything, I can't imagine he writes that a week later. And, and then like, he's oh, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. You never know, right? But yeah. uh, I, I don't see it happening. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, anything else to wrap this one up, Drake? No, I think that is about it. Just don't forget to like, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, too, you guys, so you get all the updates and uh notifications when we have new videos so uh I'll become part of the it. elite 10 percent. yeah that's right <laughs> elite the elite 
the same.